In the Curse of Misfortune Lane, one to four players plays the neighborhood kids trying to stop the curse once and for all. One other player is the monster trying to weaken the kids' chances before night falls. When that happens, you know what? How about I just show you first? Before I do that, I want to say that I received this prototype from the designer in exchange for an honest review. Because it's in development, some of the components I will be showing you are not the finished versions. This game is on Kickstarter. We'll add a link if you'd like to check it out. The monster player will secretly choose werewolf, vampire, or zombie. The passive abilities and decks are all different. This player will be trying to trick the kids and slow them down during the day phase. The kids have abilities as well, such as being able to stash a card before anything bad happens or prevent the luck card from vanishing from the game. This will all make sense soon. After you've set up the locations and location decks, the monster places two ladders from their deck on two locations. The kids, from oldest to youngest, choose a location and draw cards until they decide to stop or draw an encounter. When they stop, the next player goes. If an encounter is pulled, the inventory and encounter are shuffled back into the deck and your turn is over. Some kid abilities modify this. The monster wants to trick the kids into thinking they're a different monster. Each weapon only works against one specific monster and the chance of finding them is tied to the location card symbols. If the kids figure out the monster's identity, they can target those spots. Luck cards work against any monster and are spread through all the location decks. The monster has another trick. After all the kids have searched, they get to play one of these cards to make it harder for the kids. The deposit phase is next. The kids stash all of the goodies they found. Finally, all the players decide whether to keep searching or stop. There are six rounds during the day phase. After that, or if players decide to stop earlier, the night phase begins. Reveal the monster, take its deck and add the earlier stash cards that had a moon symbol. Depending on the number of cards the kids found, you will or won't add more encounter cards to the treehouse deck. Shuffle the deck, set the monster's health, and go. The monster first does its passive ability. Then the kids will draw cards from the treehouse deck, following the rules from before. Abilities work, and encounters end your turn. There's now an ambush card that not only ends your turn, but it forces all kids to discard the inventory. Once all the kids have gone, the monster plays a card from their deck. Depending on the monster, they can bloat the treehouse deck, remove cards, heal, make themselves stronger, and more. The final step is to confront the monster. You do one point of damage to the monster for every seven luck points. You also deal damage for monster-specific weapons in play. You have seven rounds at night to defeat the monster. The kids draw cards and use their powers wisely. The monster plays cards to keep the curse alive. That's the curse of misfortune lane. The length depends on the players. The more day rounds you play, the longer the game will last. Staying out the full amount will probably lead to 30 to 35 minute games. Including setup and takedown, of course. The more players you have, the more space you need. Two, maybe three people might be able to play on a coffee table. The rules aren't difficult. It's asymmetrical, but the kids are simple to play. If the player can read, they're fine to play as the kids. Leave the monster to older kids. Maybe nine and up. The theme has monsters, but it's as scary as the idea of Halloween. When we taught the game to our friend, Ariel, she had even worse luck than my dad. We usually have around five cards per kid during the day phase. Her two kids only had five total not counting the ambush card. They didn't stand a chance against the vampire. This is a great looking game with a fun theme. A group of kids teaming up to save the world, or Lane I guess, from monsters. That's cool. 
This doesn't take very long, and there's little downtime, which is important whenever you are playing with younger players or non-gamers. You're involved, somewhat, even on other people's terms. There are three monsters, and they're all fun to play. The zombies just keep coming. The vampire messes with players, and the werewolf is just plain tough. It's worth playing once as every monster. I can't say the same about the kids. They have unique abilities, but one, Sally, is rarely useful. Mikey and Tyler are similar, so pick which one sounds better. Stash before you risk losing cards, or keep a random card after encounters. Stan, Emily, Darren, and Tyler, or Mikey, are the best bets. Bad luck during the day makes this difficult. Rotten luck makes it impossible. Depending on player count, you need 6, 7, or 8 luck to damage a monster even once. Fewer than 20 cards during the day phase because of bad encounter draws and you're toast, especially with only 2 kids. At least with 3 and 4, you're less likely to end up with nothing. Toss in the monster's influence cards and you're thinking, let's just get this over with. There's no excitement when you know it happens 9 or 10 times out of 10. Difficult games can be really fun, especially when you have lots of decisions, so what you're doing matters. Aeon Zen and Flashpoint are great examples. In this game, the kids just draw cards and hope for the best, and I usually like games with lots of luck. The Curse of Misfortune Lane has things I love. Asymmetrical gameplay, variable player powers, a fun theme, simple rules, and a very reasonable playtime. Unfortunately, I can't recommend this. The monsters are fun, but the oldest sibling is always going to call dips, and for a good reason. Younger players are going to be either bored or frustrated playing as the kids. Older players probably will be bored too. The only count I'd consider would be the full five players, and even then, I'd suggest another small box, one versus many game that scales well for two to seven players and only cost 20 to 25 dollars. Not alone. Families with older kids should check out the Catacomb series too. If all the players are teens and older, I'd recommend Fury of Dracula. The Christmas Fortune Lane. Good ideas, but disappointing. It isn't for me, but hopefully this video helps you find out if it's the right fit for you.